So today, I'm about to share my screen now. Okay. So I believe everyone can see my screen. Okay, so today, the first thing we have here, on our this thing is, yesterday we talked about uh, the different cell reference, we talked about absolute, we talked about relative, we talked about mix. So today we'll be moving to VLOOKUP. And I said this is a very important formula when once Excel is concerned. It's very, very important because of what it does. So what is VLOOKUP? So uh, somebody say my volume, I should add volume. Paula, are you sure it's not from your end? I feel like my volume is okay. Oh, please, is it a general thing? Okay. So I said VLOOKUP is very important because of what it does. Because of what it does. So today we'll, do, we'll look at everything that concerns VLOOKUP. We try to use this VLOOKUP in different scenarios just to be handy enough with it. So after that, we also look at if error. We still have time we look at the if any, and then we go forward to which we call. That's if time permits. So, but I just want us to make sure we exhaust the look up very well because it's very important. So I took a lead. Uh, I, I, uh, I, I took the advice of Mr. JB yesterday, where he said that she'll be coming up with the definitions that it will help. So I decided to take that into consideration when preparing for this class. So I did a, a listing for the definition. Since it was not very comfortable with the definition, I used to pull out from Excel. So I decided to do this with. So now what is VLOOKUP? You say VLOOKUP in Excel stands for vertical lookup. So the V there stands for vertical. So when you see a VLOOKUP, it's just vertical lookup. So it's a function used to search for a value in the first column of the table or range of cells and retrieve a corresponding value in the same row or from another column. So this may be a bit confusing. So this definition, let me add one or two to it. So we say, first of all, VLOOKUP means vertical lookup. So we say we use it to, we, it's used to search for a value. Now, this place where it's written in the first column, please, uh, it was, it wasn't really been the first column. So I would, I would like to put a disclaimer to that. It wasn't really been the first column, but wherever you're looking for that value from must be in the leftmost part of your array. It must be in the leftmost part of your array. So that's just, I think that's the correct this thing, how it should be put. So whatever you're looking for must be on the leftmost part. So in VLOOKUP, you only look from left to right. You cannot look from right to left. So the movement is from left to right. So that is why whatever you're looking for, that value must always be in the leftmost part of what you have. So that is that. So we say for a VLOOKUP, when you pull it up, this is what the syntax looks like, what you're seeing on my screen. So you have VLOOKUP, then you have the open bracket. You have the first thing there is your lookup value. After the lookup value, you have the table array. After the table array, you have the column index number. After the column index number, you have the range of lookup or range lookup. So let's look at each of these concepts individually. So what's the lookup value? We say the lookup value, the lookup value is the value, the lookup value is the value you want to search for. So what uh, Excel, when Excel asks for lookup value, what is just asking for is what do you want to search for? Now that thing you're searching for is your lookup value. The very thing you're searching for is your lookup value. 
Then the next argument there is the table array. So the table array is the range of cells that contains the data. So this thing I'm searching for, where is it? This thing I'm searching for, where is it? That Now that range of cells that contain that thing I'm looking for becomes my table array. So you say the table array is the range of cells that contains the data. So the first column should contain the value being searched for. So now, whatever I'm searching for should be on the leftmost part of the array I'm using. Please, let's get this. If I'm searching for A, that means A must be the leftmost part of my array because I'm searching for A. So A now would have to be, uh, no, my array. We say the range, the range of cells that contain the data. Then the first column should contain the value being searched for. So that very thing I'm searching for should be in the first column of where I'm selecting my array from. Then the next thing is the column index number. Now, the column index number is the column that contains what I want to retrieve now. So please, let's not confuse this. This is always a bit confusing, this table array and column index. Now, the thing is this, I'm looking for a thing, but that thing I'm looking for, the table array now becomes, where am I going to find this thing that I'm looking for? That is a different argument on its own. Then the column index number is, when I see this thing that you're looking for, what exactly do you want to retrieve from that array? So I may be using row number, uh, a, a particular name as my lookup value, but what I want it to return may not be that name. Rather, what I want it to return may be the quantity of what that person bought. So these are two different things, but I'm using the person's name as my lookup value. But what I want it to return for me is the quantity or maybe the gender or maybe the country where that person is from. So these are two different things. So please hope we, 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 are, we are getting it, we are understanding what I'm saying here. So, so sorry about that. Hope it's better now. You can, can you all hear me now? Yes, now. Okay, okay. So sorry about that. Okay. So I was saying the, the basic arguments we have, the first one there is the lookup value, where we say this is actually what your, 
using to look for a particular thing. What is the main the thing you're looking? So that is our lookup value. Then the next argument that we said is the table array. This now is where are you looking for this thing from? That becomes the next argument. Then the column index number is is just asking you where exactly is the column I'm returning what you need from. So now remember we said VLOOKUP is vertical uh, lookup. So since it's vertical, that means you're working with columns. So that's why it's asking you for an, a column index number. So whatever you're looking for is in a particular column. So now, after you've given it a range, it will now ask you for, please, what do you want me to return? Which column is the thing you want me to return? That's where you now give it a column index number. And then the next one is the range lookup. This is where it's now asking you, okay, whatever I find in that column, should I return an exact match or should I return an approximate match? So we've talked about that. Exact is where you need exactly what is there, while approximate is where you need it to bring something close to, but not exactly what's there. So it might be one thing ahead of it or one thing behind, uh, under it. So, so there are situations where you can actually use the approximate match and there are situations where you can use the exact match. Today, we'll be using both situations so that you see where you'd have to use an approximate match. So I think in all of our things, all the formulas we've been using, we've always been using exact, exact. So today, I'm going to create a scenario where we'll be using an approximate match also so that you see how that is also used. So these are the different arguments as it concerns the lookup. These are the different arguments, your lookup value, your table of array, your column index number, and the range lookup. So now let's go, let's start. So we'll be starting with this. So now if you remember in, a, I think that was either a previous class or last week, we did something about uh, drop down. We did something about drop down where we we try to use drop down to look for names within a list. So today, I would like us in doing this VLOOK of this specs example, I would like us to use a drop down on it. Or maybe before we do this, before we use a drop down, let's just do a simple example first so that everybody can actually follow. Okay. So let's do a simple example. Let me just do it here. So now, we keep it here. So for those that were complaining yesterday that they were not seeing my function bar, so hope today you can see. You can see my function bar today. Okay. So equals to, so I want to say VLOOKUP. So I have my VLOOKUP here. What exactly is it am I looking for? So what I'm looking for is, okay, let me even have this thing here first so that this is what I want to use. Let me just have it typed here. I want to use, I want to use this. Now, what I want to get is, I want to know the profit. No, let me not use profit. Let me use country. I want to know the country. So let me start country here. Yeah? I want to know the country where this lady is from. Ah. Ah, these names separated. Let me use this. Uh, 
Okay. So what I want to do is I want to use VLOOKUP to look for the country where this very customer is from. So if I come here now, I say equals to VLOOKUP. So now the first argument, lookup value. So what would be my lookup value is this now, because I'm using the customer number to look for that uh, country where that very customer is from. So this is my lookup value, is that customer number that I'm using. Then the next thing I see is table array. From where am I looking for this thing that I remember is country, is it customer's country I'm interested in. So from where am I looking for this? So this was that part where I said, whatever is your lookup value must be at the leftmost part. So now you see, I have the customer number here that I'm using. So I cannot now come here and select my table array from here. I must always start that where I have that lookup value must be the leftmost part of my array. So therefore, I'll start here and select to this point. Let me just end it here. It doesn't need here. And I have my comma. So now the next argument is column index number. He's now asking me what are the thing you're looking for. From which column am I getting it? So now if you check from my selection, how many columns do I have here? This is my first column. This is the second. This is the third. This is the fourth. And this is the fifth. And what I want you to return is country. So that means country is in the fifth column. So now I'll have five there, and I'll put comma. Then the next argument now is the range lookup. Do I want it to return an approximate match, or do I want it to return an exact match? So in this case, I need an exact match. So I'll put exact, so that's false. I'll close and I'll press enter. So you see, the customer with this ID, with this number, 10028, is from Canada. Now let's see, 10028, let's see, you see, it's correct. So it has returned Canada for me because what I asked it to return is in column five and column five is Canada. Now, if we go back there, let's go back there. Let's change this from five. Let's change this from five. Let's say we want it to return four. Now, what do we have as four here? What we have as four is the column that contains city so now if i have four there and i press enter you see it will return the city now for me so now it's giving me the city which is toronto that was because i asked it to return you can see it here from my uh formula dc so it's returning what is in this column because this is the port column in that range that i selected so this is the port column in that range if i go back there I go back there and change it to two. Now what's on the second column is the name. So if I change it to two and I press enter, you see it will now return the name for me. You can see there. What I now have there is the name. So what's the name there? The name for that person is Margaret Farabi. And it has returned the name for me. Please, are we following? Have we all seen what we did there? Please, are we following? Yes, yeah, sir. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so that's one scenario now. Now let's now go back to the other sheet where I said I wanted us to use a drop down for it. Let's come here. Okay, it's here. So now we want to use that drop down we did that day. We want to do a drop down and now use VLOOKUP to fill the whole of this. I have a hand raised. Jackba. Jackba, you can unmute now. Jackba, you can unmute and ask your question. Gentu. Gentu, your hand is raised. You can unmute to ask.
Or is the hand raised by mistake? Let me just lower it. Let's move forward. Okay. So now I said I want us to use a drop down and have these customer numbers here. Yeah? Why we now use VLOOKUP to fill these other information? So how do we do that? So we we'll come here. Remember we said we have our drop down on that data. So when you go, you go look for where you have your data validation. You click on it. So now what do we want? Is a list. So we use a list. So what's the source? So the source is the source is here. This is where we want to get our list from. Where is the number? So the whole of this customer number. That's where we want to get our source from. Okay. So now we've gotten it. So let's forget about repeating all this other message for now. We just do okay. So now we have our list here. So you can see all of our customers. We have the customer numbers here. Everybody on that list. We have it here now. So now let's say we want to use this one for our list. So now we'll come here. We want to bring the full name. We now say it was to be lookup. Now, what is our lookup value? Our lookup value now is this. We are using the customer name. This becomes our lookup value. Where is the table array? Where are we looking for this name from? So we now go back here. We are looking for this name from here. So let's pick from here to here. As our this thing we we'll have command there. The next thing is our column index number. So the column index number, what are we returning there? We are returning full name. So remember, we selected from year to year. So our column index number will become this is one, this is two. So it's two now. Two will become our column index number, and we need an exact match. So we we'll pick exact. We we'll close and we we'll press enter. So now you see. This very customer number belongs to this name. Now, if we go back here to where we have our uh, drop down, we choose this person. You see, the name has automatically changed. If we choose, the name is changing. So now we've done for full name. Let's also do it for gender. Because to be look up. So gender, what's our lookup value? We are still using this customer ID. Is our lookup value. So what's the array? The lookup array, we still go to this list. We still use from here, we hold down sheet, and to this point, everything here is what we are using for map. So what's the column of array? Now it's gender. So this will be one, two, and three. So our column index this time will be three. We have our comma. And then the, we need an exact match. We close, enter. So it means this very person is male. Now, if we go back here and we choose the next listing, that's also a male. So we choose the next person. This is also a male. We choose the next person. This one is a female. We choose the next one. This one is a female. We choose the next one. This one is a male. So you can see it's working. The VLOOKUP we did with this is working with everything here. Reason being that in our, in choosing our, of our array, we covered up to this point. Now, if we go back here and this array, we are just see that it does not cover this. We'll find out that when we pick to this, we should, I don't even need to explain this part. When you do it, uh, people will come up with such situations. So let's move over to city. Now we want to do for city, we look up. So our lookup value, we still use here. What's now our array? We still go back here. Our array now would be, let's use from here to here. Now what we are looking for is city. So let's use from here to here. Okay, let's just use from here to here. 
column index, city is what? Is what number? One, two, three, four. So city is four. And then we also need an exact match. And close. So this very person is from Tokyo. So let's do for country equals to we look up. This is our lookup value. Uh, sorry about this. This is our lookup value. Table of array. I still use from here to this point. From here to here. Column index. Now this time we are looking for country. So that would be five. And then we still need our exact match. Then close. So we filled to this point. You can see. So if we come back here and we use our drop down to search for anybody, you see that all the information of that person is coming up. All the information. Okay, so that's another way you can use VLOOKUP. Now, let's go to another example where we can use VLOOKUP. Now, the next example we'll be looking at is from here. Okay. So now, this is a table. Uh, is a table. No, it's, this is not a table, but this is a, this is data. This is not really a table. But if I want to create a table, I need to insert a table here. So this is data. And on this data, we have three different columns. The first column is returning the, the number, the column, the number of the customer. And customers are noted with these numbers. One, two, three, four, five. On the next column, we have the goods that the customer bought. No, this is what they bought. So this is really what they bought. So we have the customer ID. The next one is, okay, we have the name. This is actually the name, not the, this thing, the name. So this is the customer ID, this is the name. And then this one is the feedback they gave to us. This is the feedback. So we actually used this feedback to put against their name so that we can always remember them when we are dealing with them. So now on this part, we want to use the customer ID to look for the name of each customer we have here. So we want to use the customer ID to look for the name of each customer that we have. Remember, we have five customers. So if I have one here, and here I want to look for which customer is this one. So what do I do? I'll come here. I'll say equals to VLOOKUP. What's my lookup value? My lookup value now would be this one. This is what I'm using to look for this name. So this one becomes my lookup value. Now I have my comma. What's the table? of array or table array, where am I looking for this one from? So I'll come back here. My array now would be here. From here to here. Let me just use this. From here to here. This will become my array. So I have my comma. Then what do I want it to return? Remember, it's the name I'm looking for. So this is one, this is two. So my column index now would be two. And I have my comma. And then, do I want an approximate or exact? In this case, I need an exact match. So I need an exact match. And I will now have my bracket closed. So you see, one now, the name of customer ID one is stress delicious. Let's see, is that correct? You see, one is stress delicious. So if I change this now to five, and I press enter. You see, it has changed to uh, the name of customer ID 5. That was because, remember, I picked whatever I had here 
as my lookup value. So whatever I have at this point is the name that will be returned for me. That was because in my selection, I selected everything within that uh, range. So if I should change this to three, I should change this to three. You see, it's returning waiver is in three. So this is who we have as customer ID three, and it has returned that for me. And if I'm to change this to four, and press enter, it has changed it also. So this is another way you can also use VLOOKUP. Now let's look for VLOOKUP with, this one is now with a close match. Now I want to look at VLOOKUP with an approximate match. Remember I said we are going to look at how you can use VLOOKUP, but this time instead of using a close, uh, an exact match, use an approximate match. So this is another table. And in this table, people have ordered cookies. This is what they've ordered. The total number of cookies they've ordered. And this is their order ID that we've locked in into our system. This is the cookies they've ordered. Then our company now is saying, please, let's give people free cookies. But those that ordered less than 100, please don't give them. But those that ordered up to 100 cookies, give them five free cookies. Those that order up to 200, give them 10 free cookies. And those that order up to 300, give them 15 free cookies. Those that order up to 400, give them free. So now we have this, and this is what they order. I want to use this to uh, portion the free cookies to them. So how do we do this? we we'll come here, we say equals to the lookup. We have a VLOOKUP here. Now, this is a table, mind you. This is what we refer to as a table. This is a table. So, now, it's asking for a lookup value. What will be our lookup value here? Now, I want to get a feedback from the class to know if we've been following. So, please, what will be our lookup value? I want to hear someone's talk. So, please, I need a hand raised. Let me unmute you. You tell us what will be our lookup value in this case. Let me see if all these examples have been given, if we've actually been following. Please, what will be our lookup value here? Yeah? Okay, Mojisola, you can unmute. Hello. Okay. Good evening. Yeah, good evening. So, our lookup value will be cookies order. Our lookup value will be. Cookies order. Cookies order. Yes. Cookies order. Okay. Right. Cookies order. Okay. Please, any other person? I need a, I need up to at least three different opinions. Yes, good evening. Yeah, good evening. Yeah, so still going with the cookies order. I can just pick the first um, figure so okay. that I'm able to do the rest. Okay, so that's the second opinion. Samson, you can unmute. Yes, yeah, same. Cookies order. Cookies order. Okay. Okay, so I have my three different opinions there. Eh? All everybody is going for cookies order. John, do you have a different opinion that I'm still seeing your hand raised? Yeah, um, I will say. Cookies ordered should be our lookup value. Uh, that's what everybody said now. So mm. why you were saying you had a different opinion. Okay. So since everybody said cookies ordered, let's go with cookies ordered. So now that means here yeah, we'll pick the first one, cookies ordered, and we'll have comma. Now you see it's appearing this way because we are working with a table. So this is the difference if you're using a table in your work. And when you're using a table, the moment you do for one, it replicates it for others because it's now seeing a relationship in what you're doing. So it does not need you to use a drop down for it to do it for others. Because you're using a table, Excel is automatically seeing that relationship. So the moment you're done doing for one, it replicates exactly the same for others. 
That's the advantage of working from the table. So this is in the table. So now we've had our uh, lookup value. Now it's asking for our table array. So please, where would we have our table array from? I also need feedback here. So where are we going to have our table array or from? Feedback, feedback. Okay. Modisola, you can speak. You can unmute. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. So I think our table of array should be from cooking order to um pre cooking. That's the first table or the second table? The first one. If this very table, right? Yes, yes. From here to where? To the free cooking. To the to year or to year. Is it this free cooking? To the first or? No, 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 the first C, column C. Okay, from A to C yes. would be our array. Array. Would be our table array. Yes. Okay, let's get more opinions. Thank okay. you. Uh, yes, hello. Okay, I can hear you. Yeah, it, it, it may not so necessary to get to column C in as much that we are able to capture the whole of our column A since that is where our target is. So to going forward, you can just pick A and B, column A and B as okay. our array. Okay, thank you. Okay, who else? I need more opinions, please. This very one, I think I'll take up to five. Take up to five opinions. So please, I need more hands raised. I need more hands raised. Please, where are we getting our table array from? So we have two different tables here. This is the first table. This is the second table. So now we set our uh, lookup values here. Now we are, the next argument is for us to give it, or uh, for us to select our table array. So where are we getting that from? So please, I need hands raised. Everybody speak up. What's happening now? Okay, Bukola, you can unmute. Yes, just like other people had said, good evening, sir. Okay. It's from the left hand side A to B. Okay. Or probably just A, because that's where the value we want yes. we want to work with lies. Okay. 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 So reward. You're next. You can unmute. Reward, you can unmute. Okay. I am thinking that um, it will get to the second table, which is F. Okay. So we'll select from A to F. Is that what you're yeah. saying? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So let's hear from John. And I think that will be the that will be the last person. So John, you can speak. All right, thank you. I think I shared the same opinion with the last speaker. Yeah. I am of the opinion that it should the the array should uh, range from A to F. Okay. A to F. Or so probably E. A to E also. So A to E. Yeah. Okay. So thank you everyone for those uh, suggestions. So now let's do A to C and then let's see what it will give to us. So our array now, we want to pick from here. from year to year. That's for those that said A to C, or right, let's leave it at that. We press comma, 
So it's now asking for column index. So what will now be our column index number? Please, um, this today's class is uh, everybody must talk. Oh. Please, what is our, at least I've done two different examples. So now I need feedbacks to know that, to be sure that you guys will follow you. So what will be our, he's asking for our column index number now. So what will be our column index number? Please, I don't need charts at this point. I need you to raise your hand. Let me unmute you. Bad moss. Bad moss, unmute. Hello? Okay, I can hear you. Yeah, I think it's three. Okay, you think it's three. Okay. Thank you. Bukola, Bukola you can unmute. Um, what we are looking for is the cookies or that. So that's one. Okay, so it will be one. Okay. Yes. Peter. Hello. Who is there? Hello. Hello. Okay. Uh, what would be the cookies order? Uh, yeah, talk. Okay, I it should be it should be three now. That is C free cookies. Okay. Peter. Peter, you can yes. Hello. Yes, I can hear you. What will be yes, I, I said it should be three. That is uh, free cookies. Okay, okay. Okay. So now let's have three there. Yeah? Since everybody is saying it should be three. So let's have three. So let's have three there. Comma. So what uh, type of match are we using? Is it an approximate or an exact match? An exact match. Exact match. Okay. Who else? Peter, what type of match? Appro approximate. Okay. Peter said approximate. Reward, you can unmute. Approximate. Approximate, okay. Okay. So I think I have more people saying approximate. So, uh, reward. Unmute. Reward, unmute. Tell me, why are we using approximate? Um, because we are using approximate because he said the uh, people the because it's the people we are going to give free cookies is not exact. It does not have does not have to meet an exact number. It's a range of numbers that we are going to meet. That is, if you want to get five cook people who have uh, ordered a uh, hundred cookies should have five, but another one. It's just a range. It's a range, not like an exact number. So people who have a, a more than 100 will also have five. Just like that, I mean, maybe 199 will also have five until you get to so that range. Because it is a range like that, it's not exactly one number. So it is approximate. So it's something that is approximate, not exact. Okay. Thank, thank you very much. I... I... I'm very happy with that explanation. I'm so happy. Okay, thank you. So now, without wasting further time, let's choose the, since everybody is saying it's approximate, and Kinsler has explained everything, let's use approximate. So we have true, then let's close, enter. So why is this showing us error? Please, why is this showing us error? Were you people telling me nonsense? Eh? <laughs> why are we having error? Okay. Mojisola, you can speak. Mojisola, I hear. Hello? Yes, I can hear you. So I think we are having error because the column C 
is empty. Yes, we we are so. The color three is empty, right? Yes. Or you people told me to pick three. Did you not see then that it was empty? I didn't see that. Sorry about that. Hey, okay. <laughs> Bukola, you can unmute. Let me hear from you. Oh, yes, please. Just like Mujisola rightly said, I knew I'm part of those who pick A to B because column C does not have a value intact there. We are working on column C at the moment. Okay, so what was supposed to be our column index number? As Since three is obviously not correct because we are working on... The range, on I think, should be A to B. That was what I said. Okay, we should change the range to A to B. Yes, that's my opinion. I don't know okay, if what, that's correct. If we change the range to A to B, what will now be our column index number? Our column index number, we are looking for cookies hoarded. So that will be one. So our column index number will be one. Yes. Okay. I would adjust the formula now. Let's see if that would do it. Okay. So let's go back to the formula. So this was our lookup value. Then this was our array. So according to Bukola, she said our array should be from here to here. So Come on. Let's remove this other one. So you know, she now said our lookup value should be one. So one. Then I believe we all still agree that it should be approximate. So if we press enter now, what are we having here? Please, is this correct? So this is not correct. That means it's still wrong. Okay. So that we don't waste too much time here. Now, this is this is this. We are working with table now, with two uh, two different tables. So if you watch, whenever we bring up the formula, it's not picking a cell, rather it's bringing up that table. If I say VLOOKUP, if I bring up VLOOKUP, and I pick this as my, as my lookup value, can you see it's not showing this? as A2. Rather, it's showing this as cookies or that. So it's looking at this table. The whole of this column is what it's looking at. I told you we are working with a table. It will always observe the relationship. So it's not like a normal listing, like maybe when we did with this, where we uh -huh, yeah, I told you this wasn't a table. So in this case, it's different. All, even to this other part, if we come here, all this, this is not a table. But in this part now, where we are working with, yeah, this is a table. So it's speaking the whole of the distance there. That's how it's seeing it. Okay. So now, if that is the case, so my lookup value, I said is this. You see how it's taking it. So I'll write comma. Now, what would be my table array? My table array, what, remember I always said, your table array should contain what you're looking for. Because at the end, after the table array, you need to give it what it should return for you. So my table array this time, I can't pick it from this table. Rather, I will have to pick it from this other table. And I cannot merge these two tables into one because these are two different tables. So my table array would be from here to here. Why am I covering this part where I have cookies or that and this part where I have three cookies? Because I want you to look at these cookies or that and then what I want it to return for me is the number of free cookies because it's free cookies I'm looking for. So the whole of this will become my table array. So I have my command there. And now it will now ask me for a column index number. 
and you see i just use only this table so this is the first column and this is the second column so my column index number now will become two two will be my column index number and i have comma and just like you people suggested i'll use an approximate match and i'll now close now when i press enter you see it has done please is this correct let me even hear from you people the value it's given to us is it correct yeah it is it is so yes because you say the five to five cookies to hundred and uh, if you look at the range there yes so so it is very correct that's because it's looking at this range now this person bought 363 363 is is more than 200 but it's not up to 400 okay. so it will pick this the same thing with you see this person bought 26 26 is not up to 100 so it will return this zero for me so it is very correct because it is using an approximate match so it is not up to but it is close to this so it will return that for you so this is this using so please in this case we don't have to copy from here to here we we'll copy only the table where we have what we are looking for and what we want is for you to use this number of cookies or that and return the free cookies for us though that was why we used only this table so hope we understand to this point please do we understand to this point okay if you don't understand write down your question okay so let's move forward so the next thing now is i've done this and i have these two sheets uh, these two tables within one sheet now i want to do it with another example where i have these two tables in two different sheets so let's come here so on this sheet i have this table where i have just this and on this other sheet i have this table where i have this other this thing and what i want to look for is this same free cookies so how do i do this i come here the same way we look up so what's my lookup value it will still be cookies or that this will be my lookup value i have comma what's the array i'll now go across to the other sheet and i'll select this as my array and i'll say comma now what's the column index this is one this is two so i have my two and then I'll still be using an approximate match. And I'll press enter. So you see here, it has returned the same listing for us. Everything is correct. Now, just as I said, this is a table. So doing for one, I don't need to, it will not really return this. It will just give me the answers for others. Because being a table, Excel is already seeing the relationship between these data. So that's why it will return everything at once. If this was not a table, it will work only for this. And I now need to come and do a drop down for others. Please, are we following? Please, are we following? It sounds simple, though. But we look up, has so many complications. Now, let's look at one of such complications. So, let's go back here. Okay, not this. Okay, let's go back here. Let's look at one uh, area where we could have complication. Let's try to solve it. So, now... We have this here. You all can remember what we did here when we were using the customer ID to look for the name of the customer. So now, what happens if I come here? You know, we have, if we say one, it gives us the name. If we say two, so if we come here, 
and we say two, it gives us put our formula is out here. Okay, let's just do it again. So it was to the lookup. Say that lookup value was this, comma, and then our table array was from this point to this point. You see that this is not a table. Can you see how it's speaking the array? You see even how everything is speaking it. So if it were to be a table, it will not be showing these cell numbers. Now, what do we want it to return? We say we want it to return what is in two, and then we need an exact match. Okay, so now I, I said, if we have three here, it will still give us this. If we have four here, it will, it will give us the name. If we have five here, it will give us the name. And if we have six here, it will give us, now we are seeing an error here. So how do we solve this error? That's the next thing we are moving to. That's where if you go to our this thing, we have the if error and if NA error. So if error and if NA, they are very similar. So in moving to if error and if NA, I did a note also on that. For those that need note, please, let's take that. Okay, so what is if error? If error, as we can see here, is an Excel function that allows you to handle errors in a more controlled manner by specifying what value or action should be taken if a formula produces an error. So please, can we all see my screen? Can we see this definition of if error? So I'm hoping we can all see my screen and we can all see the definition we have here. So we say if error is an Excel function that allows you to handle errors in a more controlled manner, in a more controlled manner by specifying what value or action should be taken if a formula produces an error. Now you see that our formula in that case produced an error. So that means we can use if error now to tell it what it should do in a case where that formula produces an error. We also say if error is handy for improving the readability of spreadsheets and ensure that error messages don't interfere with the overall presentation of our data. And then if error has a few arguments, so now let's look at those arguments that if error has. The first argument there is the value. You say the value, it will give it, the value is the expression or formula that you want the if error to evaluate. That's, that becomes the value, the expression or the formula that you want the if error to evaluate. Then the next one is the value if error. Then the value if error is now is U. This is the value that will be returned if the value produce an error. So if this value produces an error, now on this part, you now write, what do you want it to return? What value do you want it to return if this, val if this uh, formula or value produces an error? That is where, that's what this other part is talking about. The value that will be returned if the value produces an error. So this could be a specified value, a text, or even another formula. So this is what this argument stands for. So let's go, let's check if error. Let's see uh, if NA. Let's see if NA. Now what is if NA? If, if NA is also an Excel, uh, Excel formula, and it was introduced in later versions. So now, the reason why if error can do the same thing if NA does is because before now, we used to have just if error. 
and you can use if error to do to correct even errors that are showing NA. But now you now have if NA. So if I have an error that is showing me NA, I may choose to use if NA instead of if error. But it, the both goes, does the same thing. So we say it was introduced in the later version of Excel. So you have it from Excel 2020, uh, 2013 and upward. You have if NA, and it specifically handles NA errors. So this one is specific. The hand is only errors that are showing NA. Then the argument, we say it comes with value and value if NA. So just like we said in the other one, the first one is the value. This is the expression or formula that you want it to evaluate. Then the next one is value if NA, which you now give it what you want it to return, where you have that NA. What do you want it to return? So we say if NA is particularly useful when you want to handle an NA error specifically. So allowing you to provide a custom value or message for situations where a lookup or research operation doesn't find a range. So please hope we are all seeing this. So now let's go back to what we are doing. So now we have this here. So this means I can either use if error or if any to solve this issue where I'm having this here. So now, if I go back to that formula, this is the formula. So I'll now come here. Remember we said what it will do, the first argument is the value and the next one is the uh, if the value if is error. So now we're having error here. So let's come here. Let's bring up either if any or if error. So which one should we use? Let's use if error. So if I bring up if error here, yeah? you say I have if error here, yeah? I bring up if error. Have you seen? The first argument here is value. And in this case, we already have a value here. Yeah? This is the value. The value is this VLOOKUP that we just did. That is our value. So we're asking it to evaluate this function that we just did. So we have a value now. So now we come out of this and we have comma. If we now put our comma, you now see it's asking us for value if error. So now what do we want it to write? If after doing this VLOOKUP, it is find out, it, it finds out that the, the value is false. What should we return to us? Let's say we want to write not found. So now, we bring up our quotation, we write not, not found, not found. And we close our quotation, then we close the bracket. Remember, this one has opened its own bracket, so we have to close it. This first bracket here is for this VLOOKUP, so we have to close the bracket for the if error. So we close, and now we press enter. So you see, now where we have six, it's showing us not found. So if we come here, we put seven and press enter. It will still show us not found. But if we go back here and we put three and press enter, you see three will give us a value. In respective of the fact that we're using if error. So this if error now would only work when VLOOKUP has searched and has not found what we are looking for. That is when this value, that is now the value for the if error, would come into play. So if I have five here, if I bring up five here, because I have five, it will return the value for five. It's only when I bring up a value that I don't have, like six, that it will now work to show me what this if error, the value was. So please, do we understand to this point? It's now time for questions. So I can either choose to use if error and I, or, I, or I could choose to use if NA. It's the same thing. So if I use if NA and I still leave this value as this, or well now let's change this value. Let's use not seen. Not seen. And I press enter. So it's still the same thing. So you can see that whether it's if NA or if error is doing the same thing. If I have two here, it will show me. But if I have six, 
you see the showing that not seen. Now we have here as the value. So now, please, it's time for question. Everything we've done today. Time for questions. Please, let's ask questions. We've done so many examples to make sure nobody has any issue as it concerns the lookup. I even had to use both a situation where we were using an exact match and I also had to use a situation where we had to use an approximate match. So by what we've just done today, I don't feel anybody should have any issue when it concerns B lookup. Because I knew the importance of this formula, that was why I had to go to this extent to bring all these different scenarios to class for us to treat. So please, if you have questions, floor is open now, it's time for questions. Raise your hand, I would unmute you, and then you ask your question. Okay, accountants, you can unmute. Okay, thank you very much for the lecture, sir. We really appreciate that. You're welcome. So my question boils to the um, if error. Okay. So I I think uh, the re the reason why it looks so simple to us there is because it is just one variable. What if you have many variables that's error? Maybe for instance we are looking at um, maybe we have an error going close to like two hundred in that um, column or whatever uh, array we are using. So how how do we treat all those errors at a go? Without doing it one after the other like this. So I don't know if you understand my question. So I guess what you're asking is, for example, on a sheet like this, and you have yes. plenty errors somewhere down. Yeah, yes, right? yes. So it's the same thing. The moment you work for the first one and it was a okay. drop down you used to get others. Okay, okay. So it's okay. the same this thing it becomes applied to all. Okay, 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 that's fine. Okay. So, Bukola, you can unmute now. Ask your question. Yes. Thank you for the class. You're welcome. So, my first question goes does that. You told us first that if we are working with VLOOKUP, okay. we should look out for the leftmost um, values. Like, the, our values have to be on the left-hand side. Okay. But when we are working with VLOOKUP, but making use of a table. I want to believe, is it that the situation changes that, oh, you can walk from the left, you can walk from the right? Oh. Because the table we make use of was on the right. Okay. Now, you're, you're, you're just confused. And uh, what's confusing you is this. Now, that table we used is, is on its own. Now, remember in that table, we had our cookies order there. So that's one thing maybe you, you do not understand. On that table, let me even open the table. It's different. So you see, we had our cookies ordered here, just like yeah. we have it, just like we have it here. But now yeah. we're not using this only a lookup value because we want it to return for others. But now we are not using this as our array, because this is what we wanted to look. We wanted to use this number. This is now the number we are using, and we wanted to return this. So we cannot be using this. If this, if everything here was in one table, the uh, hair possibly would have selected, or if this was on this other part, would have selected everything. But in this case, is this is a different table. Just like when we did it across sheets, that we had to go to the new sheet, and pick, and, the that and pick the table we need from there. So this is not what we want it to return for us. We want it to look at this and return this. So our this thing, our uh, look uh, lookup value was this because we wanted to do it for others. But now when we were choosing our array, our array we can't choose this table. We have to choose this other table because this is where we want it to look from. And return. We want it to look here. If this person brought up to either of these, return what we have here. That will, you remember when anytime you choose your array, 
the next thing you have to give it is what it will be returning for you. So in that array now, that array would have to cover what you want it to look and return for you. So in this case, we didn't want it to look at this. This is what we want it to look and return this for us. So that was why we're using this table and not this. Okay, sir. So, and my second question is on the last thing we just finished doing. That's the the error. If error and uh, if any. Yes, I don't know if you can just come over it a little bit again. Okay. So, did you see the, you. Note, the, the note I did? Did you see? What did you say, sir? The note I did uh, that I was reading out. Did you see the note? Yes, I did. Okay. So, uh, if, if, you are, if you go through that note, it's actually very simple because almost like every step is is being uh, analyzed on in that note. So it's very. But I'll still do it again since you're asking. So okay. the thing is, you just knowing the argument and knowing where to place what. Okay. All right, sir. Thank you. So before we go to that, any other question, please. Please, do we have any other question? Okay, accountant. I'm still seeing you. Okay, let's pick Joseph first. Joseph has, has not asked. So, Joseph, you can go on. Joseph, what's wrong? Hello, Joseph. Yes, I can hear me. Yes, I can hear you now. Uh, okay. Good evening, sir. Yeah, good thank evening. you. Yes, sir. Thank you for the lectures. Okay. So, yeah. what's the question? Um, I have two questions. The okay. the the first one is when you were treating the tables from where we have all the customer uh, customers names and the rest. If you highlight one column. You will give space, maybe like you space like two to three columns and then go to the next one. Then once you click that one, it will highlight everything. I don't know what the, the keys you were pressing that is highlighting I just uh, like, everything. I just highlighted the first one where shift then move to where I wanted to select to. So if you yeah. it shifts, I just held down my shift. Okay. 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 Then the second one is um in what situation is this VLOOKUP applicable? Ah, is like it, is in the different situations we just use them now. So have you not seen the different situations we use them? So it's, it's, all, it's always used to look up for something. So if I'm looking for something, I I I I can easily use VLOOKUP to find that thing by just knowing the array and then knowing the column. I can easily find what I'm looking for. So, like for example, where we use the the drop down, you could see just by me having the customer's ID, it has returned. VLOOKUP has looked for every other information and returned them for me. So VLOOKUP just looks for informations or whatever you're looking for, and it will return that for you. Okay, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. So Peter, let's hear from you. Peter, you can unmute. Okay. Um, in a scenario or instance where, uh, whereby you are looking for uh, more than uh, one returns, uh, one return. For, uh, take for example, uh, here that we are looking for free cookies as a return, okay. and then you you are also looking for uh, maybe um, the the value. For that free cookies that will be returned, yeah. that is you are having two, you are expecting two returns. So in such scenario, what do you do? Okay, we'll, we'll get there. So in that scenario, you can use uh, there's something called X lookup. You can use X lookup in that scenario instead of V lookup. So okay, if you use X lookup, you can return two different things for you at the same time. So when we get to SBCOP, I'll do the example for you to see. All right, sir. Yeah. 
Thank you. So, accountants, you can unmute now. All right, sir. Thank you. So, um, so I just want to remind you. I asked a question sometimes last week about uh, is blank. No, oh, I saw it somewhere, and I was trying to understand um, its purpose in that uh, in that set. So, and I asked you. So, he said, uh, if we, anytime we are talking about or maybe in the class treating about the if error or error stuffs, you you buttress on that. So I don't know if it's applicable to the error lessons you are doing now. Okay, okay. Now is blank is 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 I wouldn't really call it an error because the, the function is, is a bit different. Now is blank. You remember when we were using count blank, right? Yes. And we we're doing searching for these things that were blank. So if, yes. if I use is blank now, is blank will return whatever this thing I have now within a particular distance range that is blank for me. So if that is what it will return for me. So now that place that is blank, it will now give it a value. Please, are you following? Yes, I'm with you. I'm with you. So maybe what I'll do is uh I would I would use it. I'll use it then maybe I'll just forward it to you. So that maybe but okay. have you tried using it? Um actually I I saw it in a budget proposal and okay, okay. So I was I was um, I was trying to replicate. I was trying to replicate it, but you know, at a point I was just confused. Okay. I will do something on you then I'll send it to you. What's what's your, oh, what's right your name on the group? Okay, on the name, um, African Maestro Samijas. Okay, okay. No mm, problem. Thank you. Thank you. Please, any other question before we, before we have to do the recap of the if error that uh, Bukola talked about? Any other question? Okay, so let me just do a recap of the if error. Bukola said she was a bit. And she didn't get it. So this was where we did it. So we did this. I said, if error. Now look at this formula. Now, usually if I bring up if error, let me clean this formula. If I bring up if error of if any, but at least you understand to the point where I say if any and if error, they do similar things. So let me just do, let me use this. They are, they are very similar. So you see, the first thing is asking me here for is value. After my value is now asking for uh, the value if NA. So this is if NA. So after I give it a value, and I'll give it, so my value now is I'm telling it to do this, that VLOOKUP, the VLOOKUP I did. And what was this VLOOKUP? The VLOOKUP was that I was using this content, and I'll now say the table array is here. Is from here, everything from here to here, comma, and I said it should give me the column index, it should return to, and then it should give me an exact match. And I closed. Now you see, the moment I close, this is now the value. This VLOOKUP that I did is now the value. Then now I now have to give it value if na so now if it is this error if it's na what should it now be now this is the value but i have to also give it value if any that's why i now have my comma then value if any i say you should just write not seen so that not seen now i'll bring it in a quotation not or let's use not found or let me even use not on the list not on the list. So this becomes my value if na, and I'll now close. 
and I'll press enter. So what has happened here is that the if NA is working with the this thing I use, then it has seen that from that from this my array, I do not have six there. That's why it is giving me this value if NA. But if I go back here and I put five, I press enter. You see, it will now return the original value of what VLOOKUP has seen. So VLOOKUP is now my value. So if we first of all do a VLOOKUP with that array, it is now when there is no lookup value within that VLOOKUP ID that it will now give me the NA value. That's the value if NA. That is when it will now return that not on the list for me. But the first thing it will look for is value. And that value is the VLOOKUP. So I hope you're, you're, you're okay now. Please, Bukola, do you now understand it? Hope you're okay now. Okay, I have a hand raised. Peter, you can unmute. Peter. Okay. Okay, you can unmute now. I've done that. Okay. Uh -huh. Peter, you said what? Yes. yes. At what scenario will you have your value not being found by uh, VLOOK? Because I, I initially asked you to to scroll this particular uh, uh, screen so that I can see column one. Okay. And then see what is on uh, on number six. Okay. There is no six. Sorry. Okay. Okay. There is no six. So, so I have three, number one to five. Two, okay, five. there's no number six. Yes, yes. Okay, you were looking okay, at this. I thought, I, I thought there was number six, and okay. uh, uh, and the B look cannot get what was on number six. No, 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 no. This oh, side, okay. This is the column number, so this is not the Yes. Yeah. The okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Okay. Mm. So, in, in case the VLOOK uh, cannot find what you're actually looking for, is there any other way you can find it? And you are very sure that the formula you have used is quite okay and you followed all the processes. Is there any other way you can do, you can do to get whatever you're looking for? If the formula you used is okay and you're very sure, then you definitely find it. Except your formula is wrong. So, if your formula is not wrong, the VLOOKUP will find it. Is it now when that formula is wrong or VLOOKUP does not find it that the if any or if error will now bring the other value for you? All right. Okay. So, Dan Juma, you can unmute. Let's hear from you. So no problem. I think um, let's go. Let's continue. No problem. Uh, I saw your hand raised now. Hello. Yes. Don't worry. Let's. No problem. Let's let's continue. Let's okay. continue. No okay. So now we've done how many different scenarios with uh, VLOOKUP? We've done over. I think I've done over five different scenarios with VLOOKUP. So now I'm going to drop an assignment. And this assignment, you are going to do it and submit it before our next class. Please, I need everybody to do this assignment. Everybody. Okay, so this is where we'll be taking the assignment from. This is where we'll be taking our assignment from. On this list, everybody have this sheet. I remember the last time I sent this sheet to all of you. So in that sheet, I think the one I sent to you stopped at where you have, okay, all of this was there. So now this is what I want you to do for me. I want everybody, see what I have here now. From here to here. From here to here, delete. 
So from here to here, from this point of full name to this point of country, I need you to delete everything you have there. Then use VLOOKUP and fill all of this. From here, fill everything within this range. So all of the full name, all of the gender, all of the city, and all of the country, use VLOOKUP and fill them for me. Also use VLOOKUP and fill all of the quantity and fill all of the product. So please, how many this thing have I asked you to fill there? I've asked you to fill full name, gender, city, country, product, and quantity. Use VLOOKUP and fill them. So you delete everything you have there. Then use VLOOKUP to fill them. Now, the lookup value you'd use is the customer number, not the other number. I want you to use this customer number to fill it up for me. So if you come here, you have the customer number here. So you fill it up for me. Using this customer number, you fill up all of, the, of these other. So please, you submit it. When you submit, I will see those that use the VLOOKUP to get it. Of course, I'll see the formula and I'll see everything you did from the formula. So that would be, ah, somebody said my audio is cracking. Please, is that a general thing or is it his own network? So that is the assignment for this week. Please hope we all got it. Any question about it? Please, if you did not get it, you can ask me now. Let me explain. Okay. Okay. Accountants, you can talk. Accountants, you can unmute. Oh, all right. Thank you. So just to to be well sure of what we are doing. So we have to find the full names, the gender, city, and country, right? Yes, along with the product and quantity. Oh, okay. 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 Uh, Bukola, you can unmute. All right. Thank you for your effort. Uh, yes. Okay. So, um, if I really do understand the question properly, that means on a fresh page, I am providing the full name, the gender, city, country. Using a drop down, we look up, right? No, I didn't ask you to do a drop down. Don't do a drop down. Just provide everything still on this sheet. Just delete everything you have here. Then use VLOOKUP on each of the first one. And then you use your drop down and take it down. So I just, when I click on the first one, I should be able to find the formula that brought it there. That way I will know you did the correcting or not. I still didn't get that. Okay. So this is what I said you should do. So you can see. Yes. I don't have anything here again. Yes. I have. So this is what I say you should do. Oh, this one's the no good. Okay, so I have all of these empty. So you come here, use VLOOKUP, fill everything here. 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 So do you now get it? Yes. Mm -hmm. So you have the this thing here. So not like you don't have where to get it from. You have it here. Uh -huh, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Because I was looking at where am I going to look out for it. Okay. So you have it here. So this sheet we we do not have. Thing we have. Let me see. 
Okay, so do do only for since we do not have this thing here. So forget about product and quantity. Do this one so you know because we do not have the product and quantity here. Okay, so you mean in the in the data based question you I mean sheet you already sent to us. We yes. have this page that is being displayed now. This very page. Yes. Okay, somebody should check. If you don't, I'll just send this one to you. All right. I, yeah, don't I, think so. I don't think we have this. I don't think so. so. We, only have, we only have that of the other and other things. So this is a different sheet entirely. Okay. So if it's a different sheet, what you can still create it. In short, we have even we've even done this. I think this will even make the assignment more exciting. So now you have this. You have this sheet. Everybody has this sheet, right? Yes. Yes. So now from this sheet, create a new sheet for me where you would have only the these information. In short, for this now, add even product and quantity. So create only this information. Now, if you check everything we have here, we have duplicates of these names here. So we do not actually have up to 500 different customers. We just have these customers buying different things. That was why we have up to 500, but we have duplicates of them. So now you would now using the uh, filter, filter this thing, filter this, because here now where we have this, we do not have duplicates. If you check here, we have just, we have just, let me see. We have just up to this number here. Just a hundred and so there's no duplicate here. Let's let's confirm that. Let's confirm that. So if I select this range, let's go to our home tab. Oh, it still is not going up. Let me take you down. Okay, so if I come to conditional formatting, remember, said we are using this range, conditional formatting, I like text that contain, let's look for duplicate value, duplicates, we we'll do okay. So you see none there has been formatted. That is to say, we do not have, okay, we have just one duplicate here. So we have this, the only name that is a duplicate. Let me see if we have more. We don't. So that's the only name that is a duplicate. Please, are we all seeing what I'm doing? Yes. Okay. So that means all of these names on these other sheets, they are, they, we have so many duplicates here. So if you check even this customer number, you find out that those ones that have the duplicates, the number also would be duplicated where you have that name again. So that is why even if you move it, even if you work with this sheet, it will still fill everything here. It will still fill everything here for you. Because wherever it finds the duplicate, it will still return that name. It will still return that gender. It will still return the city and the country. So do we get what I'm saying? Yes, because um, the other numbers still remain the same. Yes, exactly. This number is the same. That is why I said this is your lookup value. It's the customer number. So use it now to fill every other thing you have here using the lookup. So hope we understand. So sorry, are we are we still going to filter the the this thing? Yes. Now you use filter so that you will not have duplicates. Now, when you filter it and have that table, like what I have here, like you have it here now, when you filter and have a table like this, do the same even for the, uh, for the, this thing. Okay, just forget about the quantity. Forget about quantity and, uh, uh, and product. Just filter up to this ones. So have this one, two, three, four. And then you can also have the, have this customer number here 
so that when you're looking for the quant uh, your lookup value, you'll be able to search from here. Remember, if you don't have this, the customer number on your lookup or uh, your table array, it will not see what you're looking for. So just do this and then use it to fill every other thing you have here. So you can recreate that on a different sheet and do it. All right. Okay. So, Bukola, I hope that's clear now. Bukola, hope it's clear now. Yes. Okay. Uh, Badmore said he didn't get it. Uh, please. I don't have, <laughs> I don't explain this play tire. Uh, please. Can somebody who got it just go to the group, drop the assignment the way you understand it? Then if you're not correct, I would I would maybe drop it again. I have I've talked and talked and talked. Please, what I said you should do, I said everything on this sheet. Let me explain it again. Everything under the full name, under the gender, under the city, and under the country, you should wipe it off. So I want you to have a new sheet where you do not have this there. So do it. Just copy that sheet where you have all of this. Copy it to a new sheet and then clean everything you have here on this sheet, on this part, this column. So the column where you have full name, gender, city, and country, let it be blank. Then now use this customer ID to fill them up. So now when you keep this blank, before you have this blank, first of all, Go and create this sheet. Now, this sheet here, I have all of this information here, but I have just them one, one. I don't have this multiple one. Yeah, I have them multiple because they bought different products and because they had different quantity. So that is why I have this plenty, this thing here. But these customers are just a hundred and something like you can see here. So that is what I said you should do. Create this first before you now go here to create the blank. And then using VLOOKUP and using the customer ID, you can now fill them up with this. That is the assignment. That's what I said we should do. So hope it's, it's okay now. Uh, Dan Juma, you can unmute and ask your question. Dan Juma. Mm -hmm. And you might Please think you will drop the assignment question on the group. I think it will be better for us instead of gambling. Okay. Some, some Hello. Are you hearing me? Yes, I can hear you. Somebody will drop it. Somebody will drop it. Somebody who, who understood me will drop it. But if nobody drops it, I'll drop it. So, Florence, let me hear from you. Florence, you can unmute. Okay. Sorry. My just a request. Okay. Um, my request is that uh, the 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 sheet you used to teach us used. Can I please have it? Yes, I, it's already the same sheet now. I sent the last time. No, no, it's not this one. The one you used. It's not this one. The one mm. used for V lookup to teach us. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Did I, okay, no problem. Yes. I'll I'll drop that. All right. All right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, reward. Reward, you can unmute now. <coughs> this will look V look up of it, Inshallah. Well, um, what I wanted to say is that um, we're supposed to use this uh, the assignment. Yes. I think all this the, the assignment became really clumsy when you added other feature things and everything. This will look up we are looking at. I think we would have learned how to do the V look up here before even adding all this feature and no, everything. No, no. I don't, we, but you are my lecturer, so I just suggest it. It, it, it makes the assignment really, really clumsy. We want to do one thing first before we can modernize it the other way around. I was thinking okay. that. Were you, were you in class the day we would have been a. Were you in class the day we did conditional okay. formatting? For like two weeks now, I've not been in class. Yeah. Were you in class yeah, the, day, the day we did conditional formatting? You were not in class. I think so. I, I think so. I was there. 
Uh -huh. So now, let me show you the easiest way to do it. Now, when you use conditional formatting, format the ones that are duplicates. When, when you format the ones that are duplicate, okay, format unique. It will not, it will not even, you, it will still select everything because all are duplicates. Now, this is what you do. If you use, if you use your filter, I think I, 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 I get your question now. It will be a bit difficult for you to see those things. But it's actually part of why I what I want to add to that assignment. Because <laughs> I don't I don't want it to be very easy. It's an assignment you should be doing for a whole week. So if it's just but, but v, v lookup is a, you said V lookup can be very tricky. And you're adding uh, uh, all these other okay. things to it. Now we we'll make it not too much. <laughs> so it is after we have known this uh, formula, then we can graduate to that uh, one that you added all these other things. We can do it step by step. You know, this is a night school. Look up to look <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, okay. yes so, like people like us, we don't even we are not really good in computer. We just see we just develop interest in doing it. So Okay. I read you. Yeah. I'll, I'll Thank think, you very much. I'll think of it. Let's hear others. So uh, I'm still seeing hands raised here. Badmos, let's hear from you. You can unmute. Badmos. Hello. Sorry, 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 sir. I, I think I've got, I'm a little bit confused and where my confusion is, I, I think I've seen it. The question okay. is like, it's like we are having two questions. You ask us to do theta then v look so that was where i am that was where i was confused before okay. because my intention was only v v look okay. so now creating another this thing so which is why i'm confused but now i can get it that we are doing filtering then we do v look so i think i okay so john let's hear from you john on mute yeah, can, can you hear me? I can hear you. All right, thank you, boys. All right, still on the question. Eh? I, I want to be very, very clear. We are creating a new sheet. Yes. With uh, the column about uh, one, two, three, four, five columns. Here we have customer ID, the customer name, the gender, city, and the country. Yes. Then on, on the original data, that uh, on the original data set on the original data set is that where you expect us to clean out these columns and then from this new sheet in, uh, import the other data the other information back to the original data set exactly. that was the expect of yes okay but now okay. the only difference is on this other sheet, I do not have all of those names. These names now, I have just one one because I have these customer numbers. You can see how arranged this one is. These customer numbers. Yes. I have one, two, three, mm -hmm. four, five, six. You understand? So, but here, if you yes, come here, it's not that way. Here, the customer number, this is customer uh, 1, 10,127 uh, and so on and so forth. So, yeah, now the, the, they the, are not the claim. Yes. So now, let me even the person that was complaining about filter. Now you can even use the customer ID from here. You can even use this customer ID to sort. We did sort now. If the we have we not done sort? Yeah. So if you you can use this because this customer ID is unique. So if you use the customer ID to sort, it will just give you these names alone, just as they are. Then you can now copy it to a new listing, and from there you've gotten what you need. So please, things must not always come very easy. Sometimes you have to think. Remember when we started this class, I said one of the skills you have to develop is critical thinking. 
So just think of how you can get all of this data into a new sheet and you will just have one one for each. Then from there now, you can use this and now fill up this other side using VLOOKUP now.